Hey, my name is Ash T, and on this episode of The Dropouts, I have my good friend Ryan Shaughnessy, who went from professional accounting to professional acting. Thanks for coming on by, Ryan. That's a good way to put it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Ryan, where, where did you grow up? I grew up in a very small town called Pontiac, Illinois, which a lot of people will confuse with Pontiac, Michigan, but there's one in Pontiac, of, there's one in Illinois, and you look like a Nebraska boy. <laughs> I mean, I've actually Corn never been. Fed. I've never been to Nebraska. Okay, uh, um, I didn't know that. Pontiac, Illinois. Pontiac, Illinois. And what did your parents do? My dad was a. He's now a retired um, director of probation for the county that we we lived in. Oh so my! So I, you're a well-behaved kid. I was a very well-behaved kid. I was on the, the straight and narrow all growing up. And uh, my mom was a customer service at the, uh, the local printing plant, which I then worked at in the summer before I went to college. And that was when I knew I need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so we all had dreams growing up, right? As Ab kids. Absolutely, yes. Six or seven, w did you know what you wanted to be? Absolutely not. All right. Absolutely not. Was there a point in your life I was <laughs> where you one, knew where you wanted to be. I was one of those kids where um, it was the, the generic, oh, I want to be like a firefighter or a policeman. Or That's I interesting you say that because s someone else said that earlier. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. They said, I want to be a firefighter or a policeman. I didn't know. I, it was or an ER doctor, he said. ER doctor. Yeah. No, I definitely... Mm -mm. Small, small town, it's either usually you're working at the bank, you're working at that printing plant. We're also known for our maximum security prison, so there's a lot of people that worked there. Um, or you worked at one of the bars. Okay, so growing up in Pontiac, Illinois, mm -hmm. you really didn't know what you wanted to do. Did your parents ever tell you you should be something? Did, was there any external pressures that, on you? I wouldn't say external pressures. If any, the pressures I put on myself because I was very much a perfectionist. Um, I, I got straight A's all through high school and like I, I kind of kept myself at a, a certain level. Um, my what parent, subjects did you gravitate towards? I would say uh, my math and science were my highest with, when we took the ACT, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, math and math and sciences. I'm, I was really good with numbers, and that's probably how like I've always gravitated towards those kind of jobs that are numbers based. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, experience? W what about your hobbies? What did you enjoy doing outside of school? Um, I mean, outside of school, it was I, I was very active in sports. So it was after after school, it was either practice for whatever season of sport it was. Um, winter was always the busiest because I played on the basketball team. And when I say played on the basketball team, um, I got in on the last two minutes usually. <laughs> like, I was really, hey, at least you got those two minutes. Absolutely. I mean, we were, we were killing it in practice. Um, but yeah, for some reason, we never got actually into the game <laughs> until, until the end. But I did get to go to, uh, to state for three-point shooting. So that was one of the highlights. Um, but when it wasn't practice, it was then, you know, homework and, you know, watching movies. I grew up watching all the James Bond movies and, and Indiana Jones. Those are probably my two favorite fictional characters that I had. Uh, my, my dad and I, he had he literally taped every single James Bond movie, like when it was on the, the Sunday night feature on ABC. So there were a lot of VHS tapes yeah I, I watched I watched the same thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. octopussy all of those all of those oh, interesting titles yeah, that they have now absolutely I mean, <laughs> did I, you did you ever think you wanted to be a uh, be on TV at any point in your childhood did you get involved with plays so I wouldn't say like I thought about that as much growing up or at least up until probably 12 13 it was watching movies and you know watching michael jordan because that's when the bulls were good mm, yeah. um so i would say the turning point was the summer before eighth grade um my parents were on vacation so staying at my grandma's house you got wild oh yeah i would take the bike out and by me the bike i mean the schwinn um and i just get out of grandma's house and i i found the they were having open auditions for the children's play that happened every summer which i had like i had been to 
in in the audience previously, but I never thought about actually being in it. Mm. And one of the moms that was helping out the auditions was a mom that I knew from like my very small school. She was the mom of a classmate of mine. So she's like, yeah, you can just audition. And I'm like, okay, you just have to sing a song. I'm like, what song? Any song. So, um, I mean, everyone got a part and that year's production was Annie. What and song did you sing though? I could not even tell you. <laughs> um, it was probably happy birthday. <laughs> um, but I, I got cast as the ventriloquist's dummy in the radio show in Annie. So like when they're trying to find Annie's parents and they go on the radio show, that's, that was my, that was my go-to scene. And my lines, my lines killed. And that's when I knew that I'm like, all right, I like entertaining people and making people laugh. So that's when I thought, oh, that would be fun to do. But growing up in a small town and with parents that were not in the entertainment industry or anything like that, never really realized that I could make a career out of that. Hmm. And so that's why I kept on, you know, getting the good grades and then figured that I would do something with numbers and, you know, business and whatnot. It, it kind of excited you to be in front of that audience and Absol do that play. Did you ever go back and do a play the next year or were, were the parents in town by that point? Absolutely. No. So every summer then until I was basically aged out of the kids play, um, I was in it. So I was and you moved up from ventriloquists. Oh, I did. To, you know. I did. I was in, let's see, Babes in Toyland. I was like Little Boy Blue. And in Wizard of Oz, I was the Scarecrow. So that was great. And then, like, my my big claim to fame was the last year in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I was Grandpa Joe. Oh, wow. Okay. And, I mean, that's when I knew. That's like, when you killed. That's when I knew that, you know, when I grow up and get all those silver hairs, it's going to be okay because I had so much silver paint in my hair <laughs> back then. Did anyone tell you that uh, you could do this as a job? Like you're pretty good at this. You should consider doing this. No, okay. that never uh, even, that did not happen. All right. So you, so never even thought about becoming an actor professionally and you go about your business and you become, uh, you mm -hmm. go to college. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where you study. What do you study? Where do you go? Where do you study? Went to Northern Illinois and I studied accounting. I was back and forth between accounting and finance. And I decided on accounting because that was, I was told that's more like the building block. Like you can, if you do accounting, you can end up doing finance. But if you do finance, you can't necessarily do accounting. So, and you know, I, I will say accounting is for certain people because that was the only class that I uh, got a C in mm. in college and uh, I actually majored in econ with a corporate finance degree as a um, what is it not a major but as a concentration ah. because accounting was too hard for me <laughs> so uh, but you became an accountant I understand that yeah I, uh, I did the accounting degree and then to get enough hours to sit for the CPA exam uh, I ended up just putting a master's degree on that as well. And so I understand where that um, lack of, I guess, drive for accounting would be for non-accounting majors because I was a TA in grad school and I had to, you know, teach like a recitation class on Fridays of all things. So, you know, if I came in with a Gatorade bottle Friday morning, everybody all my students knew, like, it was a great Thursday night. <laughs> but I still had to make it fun somehow, especially for the people that weren't accounting majors. <clears throat> like, I had to somehow get through to them, like, this is just a basic building block. I know it's not fun. It's accounting. And I'd say most either had a C or, or better. There were a couple that, that just really didn't care. And I was like, well, <laughs> I can't can help everyone, I guess. <laughs> well, now you're exposed to a larger group of people, more diverse from all, all over the state, probably, in both undergrad and graduate. And did you ever see people and did you ever have conversations with them about acting or anything? Or were you exposed to acting even more after that? By that point, um, there were a couple of like those open calls that like were at some... Uh, 
conference room, mm -hmm. ballroom at a hotel, and like you'd come through and be like, oh yeah, you could you could do something. And so I went to a couple of those, and I realized, all right, I could see maybe I could do something like this. It was definitely more commercial stuff or print stuff in Chicago at the time because this was early 2000s. Um, it, it, Chicago wasn't like the main hub as it is now with like Chicago PD, Fire, Med. And so I kind of found this agency that I now know, but like you never pay an agency mm. to, to do the stuff. Like, so now looking back, it was like, well, oh, hmm. Could have done a little more research on that, but so I you, did get. You paid an agency. I I paid an agency to like to represent you for. I wouldn't say represent. Um, it was more just to like find, I mean, modeling work or to get me certain things. And there was one. What were those certain things? You're being very there was, there mysterious. Was, there was one. Well, because there wasn't that many. <laughs> um, the one that I remember though was a really interesting event. It was um, bear. Was it bare material? It was it was a makeup. And they were coming out with this new mat. And so they were personalizing like the mat like you would put on your face, like a double entendre of like M A T T E, hmm. but naming him Matt. Hmm. So there's like six different mats of like six different shades, right? So at the time, I it was right after summer, so I was like dark tan matte. Hmm. And there's like six of us in tuxedos and we were like they were having a convention in a suburb of chicago and then you realized it was a chippendales thing. and i mean it could have definitely <laughs> gone to chippendales real quick but that was like the first time like oh we're just gonna improv like right off the bat because yeah it was it was a crazy but fun experience mm. and i'm like all right i should get more into that and then i'm thinking well and by this time, I guess it's like 2008. And I got an internship with a public accounting firm in a suburb of Chicago. Is this at the end of grad school or? Yeah. So, I mean, I got the internship at the end of senior year. Mm. And then they brought me back during grad school and then offered me full time when I was done with grad school. And I knew that their plan was because they were very, I guess, regional based. They had a lot of offices in the Midwest, but their plan was to, to branch out and have a West Coast presence in five years. Their five-year plan was oh. to get something. So you're on the corporate track to be an accountant? Well, no. I oh. was kind of using it for, I'm like, well, if they're going to go to the West Coast, I will use that to get out to the West Coast then. So my five-year plan kind of was lining up with their five-year plan. Why did you want to go to the West Coast? Because by that time, I'm like, I wanted, like, I had gotten a bug, that, like that acting bug had bitten me. And do you remember the exact point where you said, okay, this is the, uh, the acting bug has now bit me and I want to pursue this rather than accounting? Um, I think it was more, I mean, that Annie story was when it bit me. Uh. When I realized that I could make something out of this was when, when did you realize you can make something out of it it was it through the agency during yeah during that uh the time when i was mad playing. when oh, i was mad okay. yes i'm like all right i can get paid to just to do this okay huh? so that was the first time we realized oh i can get paid for acting you can uh-huh okay mm -hmm. even though you know like you said it could have very well gone down a chicken <laughs> route but um i'm like okay and so i had started to like look into classes and whatnot in Chicago and cause this was what 2008 and so it was a it was a five-year plan and their plan got moved up like they found a West Coast presence and they bought it and they're like does anybody want to go does anybody want to be transferred to there and kind of like help set uh. up the culture that we've built here and then like put that in the West Coast and you're like Hollywood hell yes I'm like that sounds like a sign yeah I'm like okay I'll I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> and so instead of, because I wanted to do like um, Second City in Chicago, obviously, because like that's what it's known for. World renowned improv center. Absolutely. Um, so when that kind of got fast tracked, I was like, all right, I'll put that off and then I'll do that in LA. Well, um, fast forward to when we get out here, um, 
I guess obviously Groundlings is more the uh, the name or UCB, and so I ended up taking. Um, well, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. So I got out here in 2010, mm. and the busy season of 2012 was very, very busy because by that time... And your job was in a, as an accountant in LA? As an accountant, full-time, okay. 40-plus hours a week. And then in, in a busy season, you're looking 60-plus. Okay. And I had decided to do my full-time job Monday, Wednesday nights, go to a Groundlings improv class. Tuesday, Thursday, go to a commercial class. Oh, cool. So, so you're able to make some money as an accountant while you're pursuing mm-hmm. your real passion as an actor. Correct. At night. The, uh, the idea was that, yeah, I would get them to move me out here. So I'd have a job lined up. I can get a lay of the land of Los Angeles, like where things are, um, and not be, you know, stressed about because. Honestly, I don't know if I would have just made the jump by myself without a job lined up already. Like, I am in Absolutely. Awe. Like, I, I am too. I'm in awe of people that can just pack their bags and come out and here go. and just figure out figure Abs- it out on their way. Absolutely. I'm like you. I need a stable, unsecure, you know, income or something coming in before I do I that. mean, I did. I, I was definitely that at the time. Over the last decade, I have changed in that right. realm because now I'm like, I know it'll work out yeah. and I have a more positive mindset with that. So I'm not as like, oh, yes, I need to have a backup plan. But you were definitely stabilized when you moved out here with Mm -hmm. with that type of job. Yeah. The way I was, I was raised my, my dad, like I was always saving money. It was like 401k and then 60% goes to savings first. And then the other 40, I'll put in like into my checking Mm. and like, then I'm not even looking at it. So I'm just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Did you ever have any conversations with your parents about you wanting to pursue an acting career, getting out of this accounting thing? I mean, when I said that I was going to take this job in, it was in Sherman Oaks, and they were, my dad was all for it. He's, he was very, um, he's like, I I believe in you. Um, You you have my blessing. My mom also had the blessing, but obviously my mom was not thrilled about me moving, you know, Hmm. halfway across the country. You wanted to stay in, you used to stay in Pontiac. Illinois. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least in at least in Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I'm like when you're, you know, a suburb of Chicago, you're only an hour and a half away. Yeah. Whereas LA, you're uh, an hour and a half plus a 4-hour flight, <laughs> and right. a couple more hours. Um so she wasn't as like she was obviously um happy for me mm-hmm. and wanted me to, but you could see that she didn't want me to go and kind of like with my grandmother at the time too. Um she did not understand why I was like, why, why are you going? And this will be part of my, you know, Emmy or Oscar acceptance <laughs> speech too. So um, I told her, I'm like, well, grandma, you watch TV basically all day. So I figure why not get on NCIS, <laughs> your favorite show. And so you can see more of me. So you can see me all the time yeah. and then just, you know, replay it. And she goes, you know, makes that, make, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, well, let's fast forward to 2010. You've, you've got your job. You're working 60 hours a week, and you're doing acting classes um, on the side, like at night. What was uh, how how was your job at that point? Did you like it? Did you like what you were doing? Did you? I liked the job because I liked the people I worked with. Okay. Um, and I'm, I was good at my job. And I think what had happened was I was almost too good at my job because I was very efficient. And um, after, like, I would get something done, I wouldn't necessarily, like, oh, what else? Like, if it's 5 o'clock, I'm like, okay, now I've got class or I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do something to better myself instead of I'm already burning the candles at both ends during this time. I'm like, you have to take some time for yourself as well. So... I wasn't like going above and beyond, I guess. And, you know, asking for more work because yes, I I was not looking to to go up that corporate ladder. Um, I was a senior. This was a temporary job for you. It was a mean, it was a springboard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And like I had my senior, I was a senior tax, um, senior tax staff, I think is what it was called. And so basically I would prep some returns, some, 
were prepped under me and then I would like review them and then they would go up to a manager. And so I was just kind of in the middle world and doing my job and doing it well. Um, because I mean, also I'm a person that like, I'm not going to do a, a crap job. Um, and so, um, did that, but my, my focus was not there. It was just save up as much as possible. Um, and then it, Ironically enough, it came to an abrupt end because it was a Friday and I was getting ready to go to the, just go to the restroom. And I was like, I was asked, can you come in here for a second? And I never made it to the bathroom that day <laughs> until I was outside the building. <laughs> <laughs> and it was weird because it was kind of a hit to the ego. Um, but looking back, I would not have changed it for the world because it's like, I don't know if I would have made that kind of like, I wouldn't have jumped out to Los Angeles without a job. I don't think I would have jumped out and pursued everything else if it weren't for that nice little gentle push. What was the push? Specifically? That was, that was the push of, um, we're, we're not going to work together anymore. Wow. And so that's when I found out what, um, as most people call it, fun employment is. Um, and, and looking back, I think, I wish I would have just kind of kept going and, and pushing my, all right, well now I don't have a 60 hour thing holding me back. And that's when like I, I did classes and I did things, but looking back, I wish I would have kind of pushed myself even harder. Like, all right, I'm all in now kind of thing. Whereas 2012, 2013 was, and even first part of 2014 was just, okay this is good. Like I'm making, cause I mean, based off of that, I could still with unemployment and, and whatnot, I could still live. I could still like actually enjoy California. Cause that was probably the hardest thing first coming out here. I don't know if this, uh, happened with you, but it can be very difficult to actually not being from California. You get out here and reminding yourself, you live here now, you work here now. Carol, California is a very nice place. And a lot of people come here for vacation. But for us, it's not a vacation anymore. And you can get stuck in vacation mode <laughs> very, very easily. So what you're saying is you started to enjoy life <clears throat> after you left the job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd say there was a good 12 month span where like it was just in, enjoying life and, and traveling, which I mean, it was it was great. Um, I wouldn't take it back. But yeah, at the same time, it was I wish current Ryan would have told past Ryan being like, you know, you could put your foot on the gas a little bit, mm. a little bit more. But then you started to put the foot on the gas, right? Ironically in enough, no. it was <laughs> oh, in 2014. It was a, I was at a bar watching a, a playoff hockey game and our server had just become a Cinderella at Disney. Mm -hmm. She's like, you should audition for Disney. And so we live in Los Angeles, right? Getting to Anaheim, not usually very easy. And the only like track that I had previously was when the Chicago White Sox would come play the Anaheim Angels, I would go down and watch a baseball game. But if you're leaving at two, three o'clock in the afternoon and going south on the five, it's okay. going to take you two and a half hours to get to Anaheim. So that's the only thing I had in my head as what Anaheim had to offer. I had never been to Disneyland. I'd gone to Disney World twice with my family growing up, but I had never been to Disneyland. So I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to drive down to Anaheim all the time for work. But at the same time, fun employment doesn't last forever. And I'm like, mm, maybe I should. So I, I said, what the heck? Um, I'll, I'll go audition for Disney. Went to the wrong audition first. So you never went back to accounting? I didn't go back to public accounting. Okay. Yeah. Um, you were kind of tired of it. You weren't really giving your full not cor to. Not corporate. Yeah. yeah. Corporate accounting, you were you were done with that. I was done with the nine to five. Yes. Yeah. You just you, so this was another avenue for you to be an actor. It was. I'm like I took it as okay. If I'm going to be an actor, like this will um, absolutely help my improv. Like I can use right. what I've learned in Groundlings as you know a character. But I went to the wrong audition. It was just I guess there's a difference between like sculpted characters and face characters. I'd gone to the sculpted, but the face character casting director was there, asked me to come back for another one. And so eventually I got hired in 
and yeah, it's crazy. The improv from the characters I've done at Disneyland, I think I've learned more from that than I probably did <laughs> at Groundlings. Yeah. Like, granted, it was it was very much a um, a, a very good base that I probably wouldn't have done well if it weren't for that. But I mean, when you have to yes and to a five-year-old <laughs> who's telling you no about everything, <laughs> oh, like you get, you, you gotta, you gotta think quick on your feet for sure. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first thing that, you know, kind of got me back into like, okay, that world. So, and that's still one of the things I do today. So what other jobs uh, do you pick up in the meantime? So that started in 2014 and then 2016, literally it was a day I was taking headshots and my good friend who's doing um, the hair and makeup for that, we just kind of made a day out of it and we're running errands that day. She's like, I have to go make an appointment for get my taxes done. Cause this was like February, 2016. And she's like, you should ask if they need any help. I'm like, I don't know. I left, I left that behind. I don't know if I want to do that. She's like, no, just, just see what I'm like. So I'm literally there in like my makeup, <laughs> my leather jacket, like my bad boy look for the headshots. <laughs> and so I go in there and I, it was uh, Chuck Sloan and associates and they were known for being an entertainment, like tax prep oh, yeah. place. And all the people there minus I think one were actors who prep tax returns. So they were very much knowledgeable about the business side of things. And, and it's weird because looking back when I came out to Los Angeles, I thought I was like behind the curve because I went to school for accounting, nothing to do with, you know, TV, film, anything in the arts. And then coming out to well, Los Angeles. Not only that, that's the same thing with, with being an actor. We, we're in our analytical mind. We're in our left brain. Mm -hmm. So trying to get back into the right brain of creativity from that is very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. And so I, I never thought that that would actually be a benefit. Yeah. But then this was kind of open to me and I answered some like tax questions and he's like, yeah, if you can get these tests done and like get licensed and whatnot, um, yeah, absolutely. You can have the desk over here. You, you, were, you were not licensed as a CPA though? So in the state of California to be, to re, um, prepare tax returns, there's another number you have to have. Uh. So once you like the CPA thing, that is literally for public accounting. Mm. And tax return preparation is something separate. So I still have my CPA license, but it's inactive. Can't uh, do anything in the public accounting world. But every year you gotta do uh, more education and take tests so you can, I think it's like the California Tax Education Council. And you get a number, you gotta get a number from the IRS, all these things. He's like, yeah, if you can get all that knocked out, like, because that place was very like people friendly. It's like you would come in, you have all your taxes done. Like they had a packet you would fill out. You bring all your W-2s because most entertainment people either had a lot of W-2s from all the different, you know, payroll companies or they had a lot of 1099s. And so they just bring everything in. And then the job was basically entering everything while having a conversation for 90 minutes. And so that was a skill to be able to do one thing, know your taxes, but also, you know, carry on a conversation with somebody and make them not hate taxes as much, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which <laughs> everyone hates taxes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you had to downgrade your lifestyle when you left the 60 hour CPA work. Is, would you say that? That's not an open ended question. Yeah. I just, <laughs> just assuming that you did, right? I mean, yeah. And did, I, did this new job did that help you kind of upgrade your lifestyle? Is that why you wanted to do it? I mean, this kind of, I wouldn't say I was missing taxes by anything, but yes, it was very um, good in a financial sense where yeah, if I can use what I went to school for and, and it, it also in a way, like it always keeps me in a business frame of mind for my own taxes and my own acting business because we're all, we're all the owners of our own business, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm like, yeah, if I can make a substantial amount of money in like those three months, then yeah, that would be, that would be great. And then 
like you can make connections through that. I've like I've actually made friends from from that, um, and so I thought, yeah, this would be a good supplement to the acting thing because, yeah, until someone is consistently on a show and you know making those really big paychecks, I'm like yeah, we need to have side we hustles. need the supplements, right? Yeah. So that became my my second. I guess side hustle. So how many side Through hustles a, do you have? Um, that would be, I guess we would say four. So wow. There's those two. And then I found, um, it was off a Facebook post that, well, I'd already had a lot of friends that did this already, but auto show, um, specialists right. who would, you know, travel the country and, um, and, you know, basically answer any question about cars. And I was like, all right, that I could do that. I mean, granted, I didn't know a lot about cars at the time. My car knowledge is much higher, mm. you know, five years later. But I'm like, I had done a lot of international traveling and I hadn't done a lot of domestic traveling. And I'm like, this would be a great way to see different cities in our yeah. own country. Yeah. And while still making money as well. So I, I started with, with um, a car company and, and did that for the year, switched companies. And then now I've done that for five years total. And it's either auto shows or different events. And it's, it's been great because yeah, you get to travel, pays well. Um, and there's like new wardrobe every, every year. So if anything, it's, you gotta sell, I have like five different black suits now. Wow. N they don't all fit, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're uh, actively pursuing acting while having four different side hustles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the, the fourth one is uh, still taxes related, but it's like um, just on the phones, people call in and I, I try and help them with their taxes. Most of the time it's just software related and they're like, oh yeah. You just got to do this and, and this, and then you, uh, you make someone's day because you're, you fix their problem. And I like doing that too, not just entertaining and acting, but also like if someone has a, a problem that I can solve, I like doing that as well. Mm, got it. Mm -hmm. So do you ever feel like you'll ever go back to full-time accounting? Um, that's a negative. <laughs> that would be a negative. You're, uh, you're happier pursuing your dream and having four side hustles. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm not happy about that. There's so many side hustles. Yes. I would like to bring, bring that down. Pare it down. Yeah. Um, but as long as the hustle is something to do with something I love, whether mm. it be, you know, the improv from the Disney or, um, the traveling from the auto shows, and like each one of these has something in common where I get to interact with people. Yeah. And I love doing that. The interaction and just meeting new people. Like I enjoy that. It, it, it comes naturally now. And so I don't look at them as like a burden anymore. Right. So if you look back in time, you kind of already alluded to this, but you feel like you would go back in time just to tell yourself to step on the gas with the acting mm -hmm. in 2012. Absolutely. Is there anything else you would do? I probably, well, I mean, I probably would have found the Disney a little sooner as well, because I do think that opened that opened doors and it's a, it's a great conversation starter too. It's like, I would be, I will, when people ask, Oh, what do you do? I'm like a full-time actor part-time tax preparer and superhero <laughs> and then they're like wait what and I'm like at at Disney and so <laughs> it's 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 opened up a lot of doors and connections that way it even allowed me to travel because I worked in the Hong Kong Disney Park um, for a summer and got to be three different Marvel superheroes and got to travel I'd never even been to Asia before and then I lived there and that in itself living in a different country on your own and I felt very cultured and my eyes were opened from that experience yeah and I felt very grateful because a lot of people especially like from where I grew up n never leave like a, a small small town or they may get out to certain different places but 
I was able to live in a different country and you know see the world and actually experience something that a lot of people wouldn't be able to do. So yeah. I felt very grateful for that and um, just very, I don't know if wordly, worldly is the right word, but very appreciative of everything that is in the world. Right. So if you're uh, telling somebody, giving them some advice, someone says, man, I, I hate accounting. I just want to do something like acting or stand up comedy. What, what, what would you tell them? Well, first off, like I have some stand up comic friends and now you have joined that, that list. Um, that in itself, I'm in awe of because that takes even more guts and like to write your own stuff. And like you are standing up at least with at Disney, like, yes, I'm standing up in front of people, but I'm as a character, you are, as yourself, like just I'm all out here, and that is to be applauded for sure, um, because that is that is not an easy thing at all. Oh yeah, the silence can get awkward. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's playing through the silence and you know making it funny is right. what you're good at. Um, so uh, if anybody, if I came into someone that has accounting and wanted to be an actor. I would say, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely doable because I have done it. And just because I haven't been on like a series regular yet. That's the whole goal as actors. We're trying to get on a TV show and we're trying to be series regular. Series regular or just a, a, a big movie that does really well that just yeah. catapults you into like, I mean, honestly, I would, I've told my friends that like, I have enough friends that are like either actors or uh, directors, editors, I'm like, I want to do a short film with all the people that I know that can qualify for an Oscar. We get nominated for an Oscar, and then all of a sudden we're on the red carpet at the Oscars and be like, who are these people? And they're like, let's look him up. And we're like, oh, he's, I don't know who he is yet. <laughs> I don't know who he is. So I'm like, he's going to be somebody. I'm like, there we go. All we got to do is get on the TV at the Oscars and... And then you're set. And like that might be the, the catapult. It may not be the like the movie that's on the big screen. It's the the short film that you may only see the nomination trailer. That you taped on, on an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And then you end up on the big screen. Yeah. But yeah. but what is going back to the question? <laughs> <laughs> right. What was the advice that you would give anybody actually that's doing a corporate nine to five job and they just want to pursue a creative career? And they're they're struggling to make that jump right now. I would say that I know that it's absolutely scary and that if, if I learned anything in the last decade is putting yourself out there and knowing that the net will, will appear. It may be further down and so that free fall might feel a little longer than you thought it might, but things will work out. But at the same time, when I say things will work out, working at it is something that you still have to do because if not then it it's just a dream like leap, leap and the net will appear that's from Killian's I think oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I took his workshop but the net you have to create for yourself absolutely <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. you gotta tie that thing up um, and and work at it and that's why I was like I should have worked at it more a little earlier I mean, I may be exactly where I am right now. And that's the other thing. It's like, you are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. But I have no, no doubt that it's going to be somewhere spectacular in the future. You believe in yourself. You believe that something big is going to happen. You're just, you just need to take the marathon. If you get in the line at the ride on a Disney, mm -hmm. eventually you'll that's get a, on the that's ride. A great, that is a great metaphor. Yeah. I like that. I think uh, our mutual friend Matthew Pescio told me that, and that might be through another acting coach that we, w that we did. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it will, you will get there. Yeah. And even if it breaks down, you'll still get there eventually. Exactly. But at least you tried. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't get in the line to begin with, yeah, you, you won't be there. You won't, yeah. You'll never get on the ride. Mm -hmm. You'll just be watching people getting on that ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wondering what if. So what's next for you, Ryan? What's next for me? Well, um, I mean, we're always in between projects, right? Right. 
Um, just finished shooting a short film, so um, that felt really nice. Like the the crew that I worked with, and that's that's the biggest thing is when you work with people that are just amazing energies. Like it never feels like work, um, and that's I've been very fortunate that most of the things I've worked on like always has great energy. Yeah, um, and so then it's you know just. When the auditions come in, we, we knock those out as quickly as possible. Sometimes from hotel rooms, like I've gotten a great like mobile setup. So if I am in a different city for the auto show work, it's not it's not an issue anymore. And what's great is that a lot of the people on the auto show teams are also are actors. Also actors. Yeah, so you've so got great you readers. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I got to do an audition right now, right after this <laughs> podcast. <so>. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well. It was great having you. Thanks for coming by and imparting your words of wisdom. My words of wisdom. Any last words that you have? I mean, I mean, I have so much wisdom already, right? Yeah. Um, I'd say to what I had said earlier is make sure that you you keep working at it and don't just don't just give up just because things are difficult. We have picked a very difficult very difficult realm to be in and it will happen as long as you keep working at it because like i said if you don't do the work if you don't do it then it will be it will be just that it'll be a dream yeah forever all yeah. right solid awesome thanks for having me man this is good i had a blast all right i did too